Hey everyone, welcome to my first official Sit Rip Productions Atlanta movie review. Now, if you were a kid like me, grew up in the 80s and 90s, you were either a Nintendo kid or a Sega Genesis kid. I personally was a Nintendo kid. The system came out in 1985, and arguably the biggest game for the Nintendo Entertainment System was Super Mario Brothers. So in 1993, two years after the release of the Super Nintendo, we got the first video game film adaptation with the Super Mario Brothers movie. I mean, it just figures that the first video game adapted to the big screen would be the biggest video game, arguably, of this generation. So the following year, we got a film adaptation of arguably the biggest video game for the Super Nintendo, Street Fighter. Boy, Hollywood was just batting a thousand for these bad video game-based movies because the same year we got Double Dragon. Dear God. This was my first time watching this movie. I thankfully skipped it when I was a kid, and I'm so glad I did. Now let me tell you why. Thousands of years ago in ancient China... You ever find it interesting how movies always begin with a thousand years ago in wherever? To one son, he gave the power over body. To the other, power over the soul. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Sorry, I hate it when I get my bad movie narration mixed up with my good movie narration. This... The legend of Sorry, I hate it when I get my bad movie openings confused with my mediocre movie openings. Cut to somewhere in China. Okay, so they cut their tongues out. Big deal. Ever heard of this thing called writing? Okay, what do all bad guys have against chains? Like, why, why can't you... Seriously. <laughs> 2007, this movie dated itself. This is only half of it. Of course it's only half of it. Did this idiot honestly think it was going to be that easy for him? Has he ever seen a movie ever? And of course, the other half is being held by some random person who happens to be friends with the main characters of the movie who just happen to be martial artists experts because, of course, it's a 90s martial arts movie based on a video game. <laughs> That's great, Banner. <laughs> Andy, how's it look out there? Oh, boy, you two are crazy. But hey... <laughs> George Hamilton and Vanna White's career. I know it's been on a downslope and everything, but dang. I mean, Andy Dick, I can understand, but dang. Pack your oxygen, Wait, so everyone's wearing masks. They've defunded the police. I mean, aside from the fact that they got the year wrong, this movie pretty much called it. Well, we got everybody in? Yes, sir. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. We're out after curfew. We're going to be gang bait because you guys wasted so much time fighting those jerks. Whoa, 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 guys. PG-13 movie. PG-13, okay? Oh look, they got ambushed by a gang led by one of the few connections to the actual video game. Moby Dick over there is Bo Abobo. You know, ignoring the fact that he looks like a Mad Max reject, how am I supposed to take a character seriously with a name like Bo Abobo? That's not a name, that's a Pokemon. Hey, what's that? Uh, it's got sentimental See, there's that chain thing again, but it's okay because it's fixed in the next shot. Oh look, Doc Brown finally mass marketed the Mr. Fusion. Behold the power of cheese. <laughs> hey, with this movie, that joke works on two levels. And of course they crash. Uh, I think what you mean to say is... Game over! Sorry, I hate when I get my bad video game-based movies confused with my laughably bad video game-based movies. And who the hell edited this crash sequence? I mean, seriously, why every time they scream do we have to get an... Extreme close-up! Hey, Broomhead! We're gonna sweep the floor with your skull! That's the best you could come up with? I mean, I know the guy's got a mohawk and everything, but the, technically the mohawk is on the scalp, so did you mean to say I'll sweep the floor with your scalp, or did you mean it like by convection, uh, you know, connection, to, like it's by proxy, the skull's connected to this? You know what? It's Double Dragon. I'm thinking way too much about this. And they're rescued by one of the Charm Sisters, Alyssa yeah. Milano. She plays the quasi-love interest Marion from the video game. Mystical powers of the dragon are far too dangerous for one person to possess. It doesn't look dangerous. They broke it in half. She broke it? I thought it was made that way. Like the guy said in the narration, I mean, it's called the double dragon for a reason. Power of body 
Oh, dude, don't talk with your mouth full. Seriously, swallow for... Why, why do actors always feel like they have to talk with food in their mouths? How's I supposed to know? Look like a piece of cheap jewelry. Jimmy? Hmm? The power of the Wait, I thought their names were Jimmy and Bimmy, like the video game. Now surrender it. Or die. Hmm. Apparently he's part Mogwai. Until I have my shades on. Can you fit any more nods to the Terminator in this movie? Seriously, I'm asking. One of my engineering firms came up with this. It will give you the strength of ten men. Please, have a seat. Oh my god, they're gonna turn him into a Goomba. Sorry, I hate when I get my bad video game-based movie plot points with other bad video game-based movie plot points. And again with the... Extreme close-up! Huh, so the villain finds our heroes with no effort and no explanation whatsoever. Nice. I've taken a new name. I am Kokoshuko. <laughs> this guy was doing cultural appropriation before it was a thing. Was it ever a thing? You'll never find the dragons. What's going on? Run! Of all the cheesy lines in this movie, you pass up the opportunity to say it's curtains for you. Did you hear that music? Starting to think this movie had more influence on the Mortal Kombat film than we thought. What a head case. You passed up the curtains line for what a head case? This guy almost seems like he's got a zipper fetish or something. Oh, so the medallion turns him into a tune? Not to stay tuned! And then we're reintroduced to the new and improved Boa Bobo, who I still can't take seriously with a name like that. How do they handle him? Uh, of course. And if that wasn't enough, they'd do this cartoonish scream take twice. Then Bobo gets taken out by this. All right. That fits in so well, I'm surprised that's not the actual audio. Give me the medallion and you can escape. We escape? What about you? With the dragon, I can stay behind and protect you. Give it to me! And it turns out the medallion lets the T-1000 turn into people. I guess they were able to fit more Terminator nods into this movie. Now you've gone and locked poor Satori in this dangerous old theater. It's a fire trap. And the place gets blown up with what's her name still inside. And while the heroes are devastated by their loss, the T-1000 takes their half of the medallion and... No, wait, now he just drives off. What? What? Why? I am Kogashuko. Oh, I guess he had an important meeting scheduled with Hills Have Eyes guy here. From now on. You'll do as I say. Since when did you even have a say? Now. Then he meets him, judge dooms him to death, and all of a sudden everybody and all the gangs follow him now. I don't understand it any more than you, don't ask. This just leads to all the gangs going after Jimmy and Bimmy, which finally gets us some of that kick-ass fighting and action that we got for the video, or they just run away again. So if you haven't noticed by now, this movie has very little to do with the plot of the video game. In the video game, the girl gets kidnapped by a gang, the brothers have to save her from the gang. That's all there is to it. So where'd this whole Chinese medallion thing come from? Simple. It's a kid's movie. Although this part is actually kind of cool. It's a boat chase scene through a dystopian destroyed Hollywood. Visually, it's kind of cool. They make very clever use of the iconic locations from Hollywood, even though it was filmed in Ohio. It does a great job of showing the scale of this dystopian future. The editing's a little bit weird, like how they're going left in this one shot and right in the next. But other than that, it's not bad. Then we get this weird fact about the river they're on. Which leads to actually a pretty damn badass explosion. 
This explosion was actually so loud that even though they announced it the night before on the news, 911 got 210 calls in 10 minutes after they detonated it. Say what you want about the crappy movies of the 90s, but they knew how to blow shit up. But then it's followed by our heroes screaming like cartoon characters. Again. Then they try to make up for it by adding another badass explosion. I have such mixed feelings about this scene. It's both awful and awesome at the same time. This water's gross. I hear it gets in your mouth. You get diarrhea for a week and all your hair falls out. That's what she said. Too easy. This is the first daylight gang attack in seven years. Why are you aggravating the gangs? What are you gonna do about it? They have rights too. Yeah, maybe the gang members are just misunderstood. Right, maybe they just need a hug. Oh my god, I'm starting to think that this movie was even more ahead of its time than the makers of the film could have ever possibly imagined. Jesus Christ, change the year and it's a documentary. Even this line from the T-1000. I just want total domination of one major American city. Is that too much to ask for? Is it? Is it? Huh? Okay, he's not Raul Julia playing M. Bison, but I gotta admit, he's pretty damn entertaining. And we find out that Alyssa Milano has captured Boa Bobo, who I still can't take seriously, and she's torturing him for information by spinach torture. Spinach boarding? I don't know. It's a kid's film. Don't act dumb. I'm not acting. You can say that again, buddy. Shuko killed Satori. Are you gonna help us or not? Welcome to the Power Corps. So Jimmy and Bimmy team up with Alyssa Milano to break into the T-1000's lair and steal his half of the amulet. Only to have the girl get finally kidnapped where we get the plot of the film... Uh, wait, no, the brother gets kidnapped. Okay, there's a plot twist I didn't see coming. And then the Power Corps headquarters is attacked and Alyssa Milano is finally kidnapped, just like in the video game, only to get rescued immediately afterward. And then she cuts this woman's whip, which just, I guess, happens to be the source of her power. I don't know. Hello, dragonfly. So the T-1000 turns into the other brother, and we get probably the closest we'll ever get to seeing Double Dragon on the big screen. Shadow Demon, you shall not pass. You shall not pass! Come on, you know you thought the same thing. How could you not? Oh look, it's what the producers did when they were told to adapt this game into a movie. Piece of junk. I could do better without you. If I didn't know better, I'd say that shot was intended for a 3D movie. And despite all that, the villain still gets the other half of the medallion, which somehow turns the movie dark and turns him into... I don't know, a couple of minions from a Power Rangers movie? And they stop him by lazy foreshadowing, causing the brothers to get the medallion and make one last desperate attempt to look like the video game. Oh, shit. You said it. Then they Bill and Ted's bogus journey, the T-1000, and get him to tell the cops to... Arrest me. Escort Mr. Shuko to the station. You think I'm bad? Where do you meet my lawyers? Ugh, they'd have just been better off having him say, I'll be back. And finally we see that a Bobo wants to turn his life around and be a good guy. Or it's not actually a Bobo, it's Bimmy, I mean Billy, possessing a Bobo. I'm tired of fighting. I really am. A Bobo, it's Billy. You think maybe I could drive? Hmm? No problem. Yes! <laughs> or is it? What? Of course this movie ends on that note. What other note could it possibly end on?
This movie is terrible. It flopped in the box office, and with good reason. It came out a year after the disappointment of the Super Mario Brothers movie, and it came out the same year as the disappointment of the Street Fighter movie. Sure, the movie was intended for kids, and it's mindless enough that if you want a movie to babysit your kids for an hour and a half, go ahead, put this on it. But one year later, we got the Mortal Kombat movie, which, yes, it was trying to be teen and kid-friendly as well, but at the same time, try and be at least a little bit faithful to the source material. This movie? Critics hated it. Audiences hated it. Hell, see, my, even some of the actors hated it. Personally, I think I'd rather play the actual video game, and I didn't even like the video game. Granted, this movie has a few, a very few, redeeming qualities. So if you want something to keep your kids occupied for an hour and a half, or if you want to throw back to just how ridiculous and mind-numbing the movies were back in the 90s, consider watching this piece of shit. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did a lot of work on this, and I've been planning this for quite a while. I've got a couple more movie reviews lined up for later this year. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave me a comment below letting me know what you think. Also, please hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon to be notified when I get new content coming up. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you all next time.